These are excavators. But this one is different. No one is operating it. As our world continues to grow and evolve, so do our infrastructure needs. Bridges are gonna fall apart, dams are gonna break, levees are gonna be overwhelmed. And the reason that we're not doing that kind of work right now is just too expensive. But if we don't take care of them, then it's gonna cost even more in the long run. This is Noah Reedy Campbell. His company, Built Robotics, is dedicated to finding a solution. You know, those kinds of massive infrastructure projects, they need to happen over the next you know, 10, 20 years. And I think robots are gonna play a really big role. And if they succeed, it would fundamentally change the way our world is built. But how? If you were a construction worker in 1900 and you looked at how people build today, it's very similar actually. So the industry is just, it's been kind of static. At the start of the 20th century, hydraulics made their way into construction. In the 1960s, this technology became mainstream. What used to be powered by cables and steam now had the power and precision of hydraulics. But since then, not much has changed. We really believe that what's going to happen next is that you're not going to see the innovation on the mechanical side, and instead you're going to start to see it on the software side. You don't necessarily need to have a person who's in there, you know, moving every single lever, Here's an opportunity to really make a big difference in an industry that's been neglected or ignored by the technology industry for a long time. Silicon Valley hasn't really made inroads in the construction industry, but Noah has history there. I started Built because my dad worked in construction when I was a kid, and every summer I worked for him when I was in high school. Back in 2016, I was like, Dad, look, there's this idea I really want to tell you about. I think I know what I want to do for my next company. I want to automate heavy equipment. And he's like, look, if you really want to do this, before you automate equipment, you better learn how to operate it first. So the next morning I woke up, I called the local John Deere dealer, and I rented an excavator. And I told my mom that for Mother's Day, I was going to dig her a pond. And by the end of it, I could start kind of get the gears turning, thinking about how I could write software to allow the machine to do some of the work that I was doing. Six months later, we had our first prototype up and running. Four years later, Built has done a dozen projects on two continents. The way they've done this is pretty clever. They actually don't make any construction equipment. So what we develop is an AI guidance system that you can install on commercially available off-the-shelf equipment from Cat, Deer, Komatsu, any of the major manufacturers. And then we write the software that goes inside that system and interfaces with the machine so that it's able to navigate around the job site. And it's using stuff like GPS, cameras, LiDAR, radar, in order to observe its environment. And then robotic equipment operators are able to load in plans or blueprints and then tell the machine exactly what they want it to do. And you set it up, you hit go, and you come back you know, at the end of the day when the machine's done. You might be wondering, isn't this just going to take away construction jobs? Robots don't automate jobs, they automate tasks. We really think of the robot as basically a force multiplier for those operators on the job site. So, you know, they don't have to be doing those sort of mundane, simple tasks, which are kind of a waste of somebody with that level of skill. And instead, they can focus on the higher touch, higher value work. Imagine a future where one operator is managing two, five, or even ten of these machines. Job sites that used to sit idle could now have robots working around the clock. A job that would have taken months before now takes weeks. How fast would we be able to build the next Empire State Building or Panama Canal? At the end of the day, I'm a nerd. Like, I love the technology. I think technology is actually an incredible force for good. And the long-term vision is not just excavators or not just earth moving. It's working on a variety of different tasks throughout the whole construction stack. It's already a massive industry, but there's actually a whole lot more that could be done. We could have much better roads so we don't have the same kind of traffic. Building wind farms, solar farms, water pipelines, more energy efficient buildings. And I think this tremendous appetite where people want to shape the world. And if we can figure out ways to let the humans focus on the design, the aesthetics, the art that goes along with building, and then let machines do the more repetitive, mundane, we can actually shape our environment in a way that could have a radical impact on everything. It's not just a matter of what we want, it's a matter of what is necessary. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you liked this video. Please follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram so that we can continue to share stories about people thinking differently and changing the world.